Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to talk about how we can build our own VPN server not inside of our office. Now, if you're looking for something inside of your home office that you can use to connect your network shares, have a look at some of my other tutorials. The most recent one I did is utilizing a Raspberry Pi Zero as a VPN bridged through Pi Hole. You can have a look at the description to find that video link there. Now, what we're going to talk about today is how to use an external server to build your own personal VPN. This has the advantages over the other commercial VPNs in that you know exactly what the server is doing or not doing. It has the disadvantage that it's not going to mask your privacy as much as another server. And the reason is you're going to be utilizing the same IP address. It's just shifting from your home IP address to your server IP address. But something you could do is save a copy of this image, close one image, and spin up a new one every month or so, and that'll constantly rotate your IP address. That's going to do a little bit of a proxy job to help your, uh, your individual privacy, but ultimately this is not necessarily a privacy as much as a security bridge. For if you are utilizing a uh, open wire wireless network somewhere, you're, you're out, out with your Mac at a Starbucks sipping on a latte and you need to protect yourself utilizing their system, you can go ahead and use this option. We're going to be using my new affiliate of Linode. So have a look at Linode. Use my affiliate link tlm.li forward slash Linode. You can get $100 credit for 60 days. You can spin up a whole lot of machine tests, and that's really what I'm doing right now. So expect a lot of these over the course of the next few weeks as we are experimenting with the various limits and things that we can use a Linode server for. So in today, we're going to be looking at OpenVPN. You do have a couple options between WireGuard and OpenVPN. We will get to that in a moment. But what we want to do is we want to create a VPN on a good domain name. We want to get all your configuration set up, and then we actually want to install an SSL, and we want to make sure everything's all cleaned up for a full production type system. These are some of the things I had to dig pretty far deep into the internet to find some of these resources. But we're going to go ahead and walk you through all of that, and uh, fortunately I know a little bit about server technology to be able to pull off some of these things. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, get started on this process. And it's actually going to start by heading on into the control panel for wherever you are managing your domains. Now, I'm going to start out here by saying that I, I'm doing control panel, not that we're hosting anything over there. I'm just using the control panel for the DNS management. If you're managing your domains at like a GoDaddy or anything else, all you need to make sure you have is a subdomain where you can create a subdomain for your for your DN, uh, domain for your uh, DNS, and you need to be able to change the IP addresses. Alternatively, you could utilize anything. I just happen to be using cPanel in this particular example. We're going to go in, create a subdomain. I'm going to create vpn.switchtolinux.com. And then what we're going to do is when that is all done, we're just going to go ahead and jump on over into the Linode dashboard, create a new Linode up here, and then you're going to head on over to the Marketplace tab, and then you can see a variety of different software you can automatically install. And I want to look at a few more of these before my free credits run out. But there's two VPNs, there's WireGuard and there's OpenVPN. Now, if you want to know the difference between these two guys, really, VPN, um, uh, WireGuard is newer technology, it is faster technology, it is all open source, but it is not thoroughly as tested as OpenVPN. OpenVPN is still fast enough. It's not going to limit you down a whole lot. You may not even know you're on it. It is a protocol used by most systems, and frankly, it is actually a protocol that has more research and more hardening behind it. So it doesn't really matter which one you want to go with. Just know that for this case, I'm using OpenVPN, mostly because A, I'm more familiar with it, and B, WireGuard client will not work on my MX Linux uh, build, which is where I'm most likely to use this at. So we're going to go ahead and select our OpenVPN. 
and then we need to go in into your settings. Now, the one thing it requires is it requires a VPN password. This is actually the login for your default OpenVPN client account that's going to allow you to administer your VPN from a web admin interface. Debian 10 is presently the only image that is available to you, so just go ahead and stick with Debian 10 and pick the region closest to you. I will pick Newark, New Jersey. You need to pick your Linode plan. This guy here is going to cost us $5 a month to run. And the Linode label is just an internal label for you to see what it is. Since it has OpenVPN in the name, I'm okay with leaving that exactly where it is. Somewhere I think when I scrolled back up there, it reset that password. So I'm just going to go ahead and re-enter my password here. And uh, we will be pretty much good to go. There's actually two times you need to enter the password. This one is the VPN management and the one at the very bottom of the page. This is actually the root password to get in with SSH. You can alternatively use SSH keys, might be a little bit more secure in the long run, but we're just gonna go ahead and use this very complicated root password instead to get everything running on that way. Go ahead and hit create, and then it's gonna start spinning this up. Now it's gonna give you your IP address up there in the corner. You're gonna to wanna to copy that IP address over into the A record for your subdomain. So what we'll see is, I'm gonna come over here, grab the IP address, copy that, head back over to cPanel, and then we're gonna go into our zone editor, grab our switch to Linux zones, and then we're just gonna filter by VPN, find the A record for vpn.switchtolinux.com and paste it in. Now that's going to redirect vpn.switchtolinux.com to this particular server. Now, since most of these servers are just going to have a catch-all, anything that really lands on that server is going to show up and, and work unless you harden it. There's ways to do that. Now, back on Linode's page, you can go over and hit the I button next to the OpenVPN, and then you'll see the various guides that they have. These are going to help you get things set up. Basically, it's very simple configuration. They're not going to teach us how to add an SSL or anything like that, so we're going to do that. What we're seeing here is you just need to go to your IP address, colon, the port, which is default 943 slash admin, and then use OpenVPN as the username, and then the password is the password that we set up for the VPN password. So over here, we'll go ahead and enter that uh, VPN password, and then we will see for the first time the web admin login for your VPN server. There is a big EULA. This is actually a commercial software. The Without a activating it, you are allowed to have two simultaneous connections. If you're going to need more than that, maybe you have a family plan or a business or an enterprise, you're going to want to go through and uh, get yourself a little bit um, uh, a more of a license there. So here we can see where we have two VPN connections are allowed. There's a get activation key. This is optional. And uh, basically it's going to allow you to buy an activation key for as many things as you want. Now what we're going to do is we're going to log into the SSH um, server here. So we're going to SSH in, root at the IP address of the server, enter in your password. And what we're going to do now is we are going to get the cert bot installed. So we're going to set up an SSL. Now you can't set up the SSL in the same manner that... Uh, you ordinarily would. Because of the way it's set up, it's going to mess with your config files. So we're going to get around this. First thing we're going to do is we're going to install the cert bot by going into install cert bot and then Python cert bot Apache. You need that Python cert bot Apache is the Apache plugin for cert bot. Most of the instructions now are informing you to install snapd and install the snap version of this. Since this is something that's not huge and critical. I just don't see the reason why utilizing the snap version, but understand you can do, um, you can install snapd and then just install, uh, I think it's just, just install the certbot snap and that will automatically come with a plugin. This case, we need to add that extra plugin, let it go ahead and run its install. And then what we're going to see is it's going to ask us to, uh, set everything up. Well, we're going to ask it to set everything up, but we're actually going to do it as a, um, we're not going to do it as a full setup the way you ordinarily would. We're actually going to do something a little bit differently here. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a standalone. So the difference between a standalone and a standard cert bot here is that the standalone is going to allow us to grab the keys and put it in, but it's not gonna configure everything in the server. And that's what we want because we don't want it to mess up what we already have because you're gonna come up with some issues along the way if you do that. Now, this case here, if you just go ahead and set the standalone server then and walk through the process, we're actually gonna end on a final error here. And so what you'll do here is, uh, we're gonna go ahead and enter the VPN. I'll just kind of show you what happens, vpn.switchtolinux. Dot com, and then what we're going to get is we get this error here. Problem binding to port 80 could not bind IPv4 or IVP6. This is because the system is running Apache, and to run this standalone option, you have to disable Apache. So what we're going to do here is, uh, it took me a little bit to diagnose the issue here, but the problem is you had to go ahead and turn off Apache. And so what we're going to do is, you can see here I service Apache to stop, now we did our standalone, and now we have our keys, which are in Etsy Let's Encrypt Live VPN.SwitchToLinux.com. So we'll go ahead and restart Apache. That's to make sure that everything is set back up. But one of the side effects of this is it's going to enable a, um, a port 80, and we're going to walk through how to get solve that problem later. So here I've drilled down to the directory. You can see that uh, when we go down to the directory, you can see my cert, chain, full chain, and prive key. So what we're going to do is now we're going to pull up our SPC, SCP application, excuse me, and we're going to pull in those files. We're going to drop them onto the desktop in a directory called VPN key. So let's just drop to the directory, go to VPN key, and then now we're going to use this SCP. Dash R is going to uh, recursively grab the directory, log into the uh, the SSH, and then drop it where you want to drop it, enter in your password, and then it's going to copy down all of the individual files. So we'll go ahead and drop into that folder and verify all the files are going to be here. So these standalone files are what we're going to want to use to add the VPN sections. We're going to go back into our Open VPN Access Server under Configuration and Web Server. And then when you get in here at the very bottom, there's certificates. Now we don't need to worry about the CA bundle, the certificate and the private key. The certificate here is uh, going to be your fullchain.pem. And then your private key is going to be your priv key. So go ahead and hit validate. And then we're going to get a notice at the top that we need to uh, fix the server up here. So let's go ahead and hit the save button at the bottom. And then now we need to update running server and then, whoa, we get unable to connect. That's because we're still connected on the IP address and that's not going to work when the SSL is installed. So all we need to do here is just get rid of the IP address and go back to vpn.switchtolinux.com. Keep that port number, port number is important. And now there we are. Now we're back to our server and you can see that we no longer get the, uh, the um, error where the site is no longer secure. Let's just go ahead and get logged back in, and then we'll go ahead and double check that that SSL is set up. Now, because you had to run this in this particular type of format to prevent it messing anything up, you are gonna have to go back in here and you are gonna have to rerun the cert bot manually and update the keys every uh, 60 to 90 days. So be aware of that. That is going to be a, a downside of this approach. I'm sure you could get around that with another direction. It's just to get this guy up and running with the, um, with the IP here. I want to just go ahead and do it the best I could. Now we're going to user management, user permissions. We're going to create the new username that's going to be able to connect. So I will do STLVPN and then click down under your more settings over here to get more options. You can make them admin or not, deny access, which is good for blocking somebody out. Uh, under the no set password, you're gonna wanna set a password here. I did not do it on this screen. I did it after I stopped recording for extra security. Uh, but you can see here that um, basically you can adjust a variety of settings. 
And then again, like I said, after I uh, stopped the video, I went ahead and reset that password here. You do have to click this button to update running server again. This is going to save all the configurations, including the new usernames that you have. So we'll go ahead and hit the update running server, and then we're going to be able to get in there and get everything cleaned up. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and change the host name to the full uh, domain name. And this is going to make sure that inside of the OpenVPN configuration file that has the domain name rather than the IP address. This is going to be if we need to change the IP address, we can keep the same, uh, we can keep the same um, basic configurations. Now, the biggest problem we're going to have to deal with now is if we access the site without the HTTPS, then we're going to get this default Apache landing page. We want to get rid of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into the server on SSH, go into the Apache 2 directory, and go into our sites enabled. Actually, I think I'm going to do sites available here. It doesn't really matter which one. We're going to load up the default conf, which is going to have the instructions for loading into a port 80, which is what the non-HTTPS is. And what we're going to do is all we have to do is add a redirect here, and we're just going to redirect everything in the root back to the full uh, HTTPS version. So now if you just type in vpn.switchtolinux.com without going to uh, the HTTPS, then you, it will just go ahead and redirect automatically, so I don't ever have to worry about seeing that Apache default page. We're just going to comment out the those two lines there, which is the document root and anything. Error logs, I don't care. They, those can go ahead and stay uh, just in case something weird goes on. And of course, anytime we make any changes, just go ahead and restart Apache 2. So service Apache 2 restart. Now, if I go on over to my vpn.switchtolinux.com, you'll see it's going to automatically redirect me to the HTTPS version. So now we have our full security, we have our SSL installed, and everything is redirecting back to the HTTPS. Now we're going to go ahead and log in with the a uh, user that's going to be able to access the server. And then when we get landed on this page, it is going to give you information for your recommended device. Since I'm recording this on Linux, then it's going to give us the Linux as the option. But you also have the ability to download the Mac and the Windows. And I'm um, sorry, the Mac, yeah, Mac, the Windows. There's the Android and the iOS devices. It'll give you the instructions for getting into each of those. I didn't check the Android or not. All we need is this client.ovpn file. Go ahead and download that guy there. And then once that is downloaded, you can see we have it in our download file here. Now we just need to add this configuration. Now here on Linux Mint, and I have an older version of Linux Mint, so I don't actually have these plugins working, so it's not actually going to install correctly. But you just need to load up your choose network type, import in the file. That's all you're going to need to do. And then on that screen, you're going to want to go in and enter your username and your password. I did test this on MX Linux and on Arch, and it works. It connects to the VPN just fine. So there we have it. Now we have a good VPN on Linode. This is going to cost you $5 a month to run that over there on Linode. And you can use my affiliate link, tlm.li forward slash Linode, in order to get the $100 credit or uh, for 60 days. And then you can test this out, see if it's worth it, and uh, see if uh, what else you can actually do in there in that period of time. So there we have it. Once again, for clarity, this is not going to be the same type of VPN that you might get with like a private internet access where it's going to mask your IP directly, simply because if you're the only user on it, it's just going to shift the IP from your home IP address to the server IP address. It will give you location protection, though. I will grant you that. It is going to give you anybody that's pulling your location data from your IP address. You are going to be protected from that, unless you happen to be in the same city that your, your IP is going through. All right. But it is absolutely going to help you with security if you are on open Wi-Fi networks. So if you're traveling around a lot, that is going to be a, uh, a good thing to try out. So there you have it. There is utilizing Linode to create your VPN. Let me know if you have any questions or comments about that in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. 
This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.